On this episode, we swap stories and discuss the nuances of having a maid in Bangkok. So, if you've ever hired someone to clean your house and been happy, disappointed, or even embarrassed at the results, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawati crap and welcome to the Bangkok podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Bangkok in 2001 and only managed to get to my first Thai beach in 2003. True story. Sad but true. And I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 17 years ago, fell in love with zipping along the klongs in high-speed long-tail boats and never left. It's the only way to fly. All right, well, before we start, we want to say a quick thank you to one of our patrons, a handsome gentleman by the name of Mitch Gray, who supports us at the show shout-out level. Stick around after we're done recapping some of the funny or interesting stories we have about employing maids in Bangkok to hear why Mitch's birthday might give him a hard time when he travels to Thailand. You can learn more about becoming a patron on our website. And of course, one of the cool things our patrons get is an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we talk about all kinds of stuff, usually current events related. Uh, we just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted about the mighty Chow Phraya River and how the authorities want to increase traffic on the river fivefold. Uh, and, and we discussed the pros and cons of such a desire. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not sure about that. We'll have to see, I guess. All right, so on this episode, we thought we'd chat a little bit about something that most people in Bangkok have had experience with at some point, and that is maids, domestic help or home cleaning services. Now, most maids are wonderful, helpful people, and good ones are coveted like gold, but no matter if your maid is good or just average or even sometimes just plain bad, um, almost everyone has a funny story to tell. And I thought that be uh, would be a fun topic for Ed and I to just chat about tonight. So just for a little bit of background, um, it's quite common in Thailand for people to have maids. And I don't know about you. I don't know about your background. Uh, I grew up in the States. I'm, 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 I'm a prototypical middle class guy. I grew up in Ohio. And basically, none of my friends had maids. So it's like if if if. If someone I knew said, you know, we have this maid who lives with us, I would have thought it was utterly crazy and ridiculous. I thought that was, I would, I would think that was only for like super rich people. Even the idea of having, you know, even the idea of having maids come to your house was just, I don't want to say totally unknown. I think I remember, you know, so I have four sisters. so So I have, we have five kids. And there was a period when I was young where my mom had someone help. So, okay. like, like the, the concept of maids is not totally foreign to me, but it's, it was pretty rare. Like, it's, it wasn't a common thing among the people I grew up with. But when I came to Thailand, I discovered that many, many people have maids. I feel like almost every Thai family has a maid. Most of my foreign friends, even if they don't have a live-in maid, they have someone come and help. So the idea of maids it's it's different than in the west like just maids are just like a common thing it's a thoroughly common thing here yeah i agree totally and it was weird for me because i when i was in high school i worked with a guy and his wife was a maid and i remember thinking like man she must know some rich people (laughs) because who who could afford to hire a maid in any western country like you got to be pretty wealthy that's right and um I grew up with a with a single mom. My mom raised me and my sister by herself, which is amazing. Um, but she cleaned, and we all pitched in and cleaned, and so we never really needed a maid. And I think that really that really sort of informed my opinion of like keeping a house clean because when I moved here, the first time I got a maid, it was like, man, I'm living large, you know. <laughs> but but I'll tell you, the first time she came over and said like, okay, what should I clean? It was really uncomfortable for me. I had a really hard time getting used to it, especially when she was cleaning while I was there. Like it just, yeah, I just had this like little balloon of my mom, this thought balloon of my mom going, you lazy bastard. What's wrong with you? Are you, are your arms broken or something? Pick up a mop and help her. (laughs) So you, so basically what you mean is you wanted to help her. I, I just, I just felt bad because it's a job that I can easily do. I can clean a bathroom. I can clean my kitchen. Right. But. 
you know, I was busy and it's just, it wasn't that expensive. And uh, it was, it was just such a weird disconnect. But like you said, it's very, very common over here. Um, it, it just took me a while to get used to. Yeah. The other, the other little background fact, uh, to realize, uh, is that if, especially if you're in Bangkok, I would say almost all maids in Bangkok either come from the northeastern part of Thailand called Isan right. or they come from Burma. Yeah, okay. All all of the all of the maids I've had, I've only ever had three have been Thai. Okay. Um yeah, I've had both Thai uh Thai maids from Isan and the, uh the just recently I've been on this string of Burmese maids, so I've had probably like four Burmese maids in a row, but I think those are the two classic cases. Um, you know, I guess there's a whole economics issue, but that's not really what the show is about. You know, but there, there's this whole question of whether it's good or bad for, for to have these low, uh, like low cost, uh, this kind of low cost employment because obviously they don't make a lot of money. I mean, this is like a, on, on the low end of the employment scale, um, and there's a whole debate about whether that's good or bad. But that's not really what this show is about. So our show is more about the the practicalities of having a maid, maybe the pros and cons, and like ooh, good the, word, you know, and 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 the goofy, the goofy situations you can end up in with with a maid. Yeah, practicalities is a good word because um, it's 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 interesting because every maid conversation that I've had, like every maid I've had, always starts with a conversation. Hey, does anyone know a good maid? Hey, do you have a good maid? It's, it's over here. It's like finding a good dentist or like a a good gardener or something <laughs> for sure you know and, and i think uh you know i think the value is that a really good maid can set you up for like five years you know yeah so, so it's it's it, it's not that most maids are bad i don't think that's the problem obviously there are some nightmare maid stories and maids can in theory like rob you and so there are some bad maids out there but but i think that it, it's mostly that most maids are kind of average, but then occasionally you get this perfect maid and it really makes your life so much easier that I think there's a, there's a high demand for high quality maids. Right, right. Uh, I, I had a maid um, in my place I lived in, in Chinatown years ago and her name was Sirawan and uh, I, I almost thought of her like an aunt. She was so nice and sweet and she was only average at actually being a maid, but she, was, she came three times a week which was nice. It was actually included in the rent I was playing. I was paying for this place. But I'll tell you the one thing I appreciated about her most was that I'm like an anti pack rat. So if I haven't used a thing in like six months, I'll throw it away or get rid of otherwise get rid of it. And she had a large family. So she told me like anything you have that's that you don't want, just give to me. I'll take care of it. And man, I got rid of so many clothes and broken electronics and kitchen utensils and like wow. frying pans and stuff. Um, when you find a maid that's like, that has this network or is willing to sort of help you get rid of stuff like this, for me, that was a huge plus. Cause I mean, what do you do when you want to throw out like a, a television or, or get rid of it? You know, <laughs> like interesting, interesting. Um, I guess I'm the opposite of you because I am a pack rat. So I tend to keep everything. Um, okay. You know, I've got, you know, so I understand your, what you're saying is, maids are a good way to offload stuff so i right i get that but I, i've had almost the opposite experience and this might be partly due to my wife it, it's like i've had a couple maids who to me they somehow scam their way into convincing my wife to give them something like it, it, it's something that i oh, really <laughs> you know it, it's something that i you know it's like you know it's like we have a, an old microwave oven and granted, we might not be using it right now, but it doesn't mean I just want to give it away. You know, it's like, like, you know, I could, I could sell it on Craigslist for a couple thousand baht, but you know, the, the maid sees something sitting there being unused and you know, they, you know, they, they, I don't know what they do. They talk sweet to my wife and all of a sudden it's missing. And I'm like, Hey, where, what happened to that microwave? Oh, that's interesting. And they're like, Oh, I gave it to the maid. So I, I actually, you know, it wasn't a big issue, but I remember at one point I told my wife to like, stop giving stuff to the maids. It's like, oh, that's, that's funny. Cause I'm happy to give them stuff. And, and it's, it's like when you find, well, like you said, when you find one that's really good at cleaning, you want to keep them. But for me, when I find one, who's like a good outlet for it to help me do stuff or get rid of stuff, that's also a really valuable. Well, know, I can definitely see that. Um, I mean, I, there, there certainly is some stuff I want to get rid of, but in general, it sounds like you and I are opposites uh, in that regard. So both of us, both of us have like 
some unique or weird maid stories. I, I, I got to say, in my experience with my own maids, I've been pretty lucky. Like, I haven't had anything, like, too weird or too bad. I mean, the, the worst thing that's happened to me uh, besides maids, like, twisting my wife's arm and, and, and like, and, and, getting, <laughs> and getting stuff given to them. The worst thing that's right. happened to me is, is so I, I've been on this string of about four or five Burmese maids in a row. And um, there's advantages and disadvantages to having Burmese maids. Um, sometimes they can actually have better English than some Thai maids. It just depends. Um, yeah, it makes it, sense. It cuts both ways. Um, I, I've had Burmese maids whose English was better than Thai maids. I've also had Burmese maids who basically have no English, so it cuts both ways. Um, but one one thing that I've run into is the maids obviously want vacation like any other employee. They want vacation. Um, mm. And uh, I don't know what it is, but the, at least the maids I've, I've had who are Burmese it's like they want more time off. Maybe they have to go all the way back to Burma. I don't know what it is, but it's like a lot of times they want, you know, a month off or things like that. And so sometimes I've had, I, you know, we've had maids who are supposed to be gone for two weeks and then they disappear for like a month, you know, <laughs> you know, so we, I, I, I think that might have a sort of an unintended positive consequence is that you really appreciate what they do, you know, like, when you suddenly you have to do your own laundry or clean your own bathroom or whatever, you're like, damn, I, I really need to sort of appreciate my maid more. Cause oh, I think sure. sometimes it's easy to take them for granted. No, for sure. I mean, I, I, I absolutely appreciate it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's funny, uh, you know, since you and I know we have known each other for so long and we, 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 we share a lot of stuff in common. It is funny when I hear you describe something that sounds the opposite of me. You know, like <laughs> the bottom line is as soon as I realized I could have someone clean for me, I jumped on it and felt like zero guilt whatsoever. You know, it's like, you know, so it's like you, you were saying like, wow, I felt really guilty when someone's cleaning my bathroom when I realized I could do it myself. I, I, yeah. I got to be honest. I was completely the opposite. I was just like, <laughs> I'm just so happy. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic that I can be sitting on my ass while someone is doing all the stuff that I don't want to do. So you walked in, you're like, ah, oh, you missed a spot. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm not like that. But I think, you know, the, the bottom line is, uh, the, the truth is, and I've joked with my mom about this, is uh, I was spoiled growing up because, uh, obviously, besides my mom, I had four sisters. And so, I, you know, it's not like my sisters took care of me. But the bottom line is, me and my dad just basically sat around and ate all day. And, like, my mom and my sisters, like, took care of everything. You know, wow. Yeah, we, um, we did have opposite experiences growing up. Yeah, I mean, so like I said, I, it, you know, the, the the idea that my sisters like catered to me is ridiculous. But the bottom line is, between my four sisters and my mom, they did like all the housework, right, all right. the housework. So you know, right. you know. Now, subsequently, I lived on my own for many years and did my own laundry for many many years. So when I was able to, you know, when I came to Thailand and realized, oh my god, I can hire someone to do what my mom and sisters used to do. I just jumped all over it. I'm I'm so bad, man. Like I'll clean up before my maid comes. Like you know, I'll like, that is tidy insane. the place a little bit. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's insane. Uh, add it to the list. I, I think both of us have some funny stories too. And I mean, I I think I have the ultimate maid story. It didn't happen to me. It happened to a good friend of mine. But I'll tell that one in a little bit. But um, I personally don't have any really outstanding, embarrassing, or crazy stories except. The worst one was that um, one time I came home and I was out drinking with some friends years ago and uh, sort of had a shower and wandered out. And I used to have a, a a fan over my bed, like a really nice roof fan. So I never used air con. And I used to, probably too much information, but I used to sleep on my bed nude a lot because, you know, you got this fan blowing on you and it's really nice and comfortable. So um, I came home drunk one night, I had a shower, I fell into my bed nude and went to sleep. And I woke up the next morning, sort of a hangover, a headache, and I wake up. My place at the time was such that, like, it was sort of like there was three condos together, and the doors between them were always open. So it was essentially one long room. You were in that place. You remember what it was like. Yeah. And um, so I woke up, and I look around a bit, and I get out, and I start making myself breakfast and turn on the TV. And as I'm looking around, I realize that the place has been cleaned. And I forgot that it was, for some reason... My maid had come that day and she thought that I would be out, but I was laying on my bed naked. 
<laughs> sleeping naked. And at some point she came in, started cleaning the living room and must have walked into the bedroom and seen my fat ass on the bed, just like snoring away. <laughs> and you probably took pictures and have, have, have she saved those pictures to this day. She may have them. She may have them. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I kind of got, oh, no, I hope. Oh, no. And I never said anything about it. And she never said anything about it. <laughs> but um, that's probably the weirdest thing that I've ever had happen to me personally. Yeah, I've been, I've been lucky. Like I said, I've been lucky. Uh, the, oh, the weirdest thing that ever happened to me is just one time. So, so, you know, now I'm living in a house and we have a maid who lives with us. So we have a, like a little maid's quarters and she lives with us. Okay. Um, and so... You know, she doesn't work. Uh, she only works five days a week, so she obviously has days off and things like that. But uh, once, and this is not the current maid I have. This is, I think, two maids ago. Just randomly once in my bedroom, it's just like I came out of the shower and walked into my bedroom, you know, completely naked. And I so I just yeah. walked out of the bathroom naked, and she was just in there cleaning, maybe not realizing that I had been in the shower or what. So it was one of those awkward encounters where I just, like, walk out completely naked and she's standing and she's like standing there you know with like a dust rag in her hand and then we're just like looking at each other in this weird thing and then she just like turned and walked out and then like i never said anything she never said anything the first thing going through your mind was like that's not how porn movies usually end usually the maid stays (laughs) well that was something you know that's the kind of thing that it's not worth telling your wife it happened (laughs) you know? <laughs> right, right, right. You know. Another another friend of mine a long time ago, um, he came home one day and he, his kitchen was downstairs in this townhouse he was in and he came in and his maid had caught a bunch of bugs in the backyard and she was like frying them or heating them up or something <laughs> in the frying, in his frying pan. Oh, really? And yeah. And he, he fired her on the spot, told her to get out. Oh, really? Like she was eating <laughs> yeah. like grasshoppers or something? Yes, I, I don't know what type of bugs they were, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't think he was lying, but he may have embellished it a little bit. But at any 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 point, she was using the frying pan to cook something, not that he would want, gross enough that he told her to leave. <laughs> so, oh wow, that's a little bit harsh. Weird. I don't think honestly, I don't think I'd fire my maid for doing that. That's a bit harsh, I think. Uh, yeah, that was probably a bit harsh. She was kind of a reactive kind of guy, so it was maybe par for the course. But uh. <laughs> anyway, both um. Both Greg and I know uh, an incredible maid story, which I'm going to let Greg tell the story because, frankly, I think Greg's a slightly better storyteller than I am. Um, So we're going to let Greg tell the story. But um, this is pretty much, of all the years we've been here and all the maid stories we've we've heard, this one pretty much takes the cake. So, yeah, this I I, I may have mentioned it on the show before at one point or another, but I'm going to tell it in its entirety. It's not too long, but. I have a friend and wonderful, wonderful guy, and he lived here for a long time. And he had some interesting tastes in adult movies. And this isn't this is not our bonus show, so I have to censor myself. But let's let's just say that uh, his tastes ran to the extreme, and he would always go down. This was this was probably ten years ago now. So um, back then, if you wanted to get your adult movies you had to go to like Panta plaza or some weird market in some back soy somewhere and buy some cds or dvds and when you got them so i'm told uh they would be delivered to you basically a blank dvd with no label no writing just a blank dvd and you had to kind of figure out which one was which so my friend for some reason he liked to keep his dvds of us all his adult dvds in a drawer loose so just jumbled up together and i don't know how he chose what he wanted to watch but that's his thing let's make clear that the maid that he had um who actually also worked for some other friends of ours was <laughs> right right what was quite famous for being very thorough so uh she had her own quirks like there were some pros and cons and uh, you'll, the story will reveal some of the pros and cons but uh, she was kind of famous among friends of ours for being incredibly thorough and like meticulous and like extremely good at like cleaning the uh, like like the opposite of like a lazy maid, like just right meticulous. She she would clean the soap out of like the little the little dish soap thing that you lift up and pop up to get the soap out. She would like clean that, you know, yeah. like really extremely thorough. Yes. And she did have a few quirks, like, for instance, when she would go into his bedroom and clean, uh, she would lock the door and he would have to stay outside. 
And when she came out to clean the living room, he would have to go in his bedroom and she would lock the door. Like, strange little quirks like that. She was a bit of an odd woman. So um, one day my friend comes home and he thinks like, I'm going to throw on some adult entertainment. So he opens his drawer to get a DVD and it's empty. All of the DVDs have been removed or taken. And his first thought is like, oh my God, did she, did she take them? Like, did she steal them or sell them or like confiscate them? Have I offended her? Is it something terrible? Like what's happened? And he's just kind of looking around and looking around. And he notices that under his entertainment center, where his TV is, he noticed he had three or four new DVD binders. And he was like, oh no, she put them in there. He's like, no, 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 no. So he went over there and sure enough, she had taken his entire porno collection went out to the market bought some dvd wallets and put them in the dvd wallets <laughs> so he's like oh god now the worst thing about that that's kind of weird enough but the worst thing was is that each individual dvd was labeled with a handwritten piece of paper that she had stapled to <laughs> the sleeve with the title of the movie which means that she had to go through every single one of these dozens and dozens of of dvds put it in the dvd player press play and i mean it's immediately obvious what type of movie you're watching and saw like hairy japanese grandmothers or whatever the title was and she wrote that title down in like very neat sort of <laughs> Thai second language right handwriting <laughs> hairy Japanese grandmothers <laughs> cut it out of the paper and stapled it to the particular <laughs> sleeve my friend was mortified he was so embarrassed because as soon as you put it in of course you press play and it's like got this menu with a video playing underneath usually and there's no sense nothing censored you see everything and like I said his tastes were <laughs> unusual <laughs> Let's just say they were varied. They, he had varied tastes. Very tastes. So I, I just, I could just imagine this, like, it must not have phased her because she did the entire collection, you know, like <laughs> I, I, I would say bonus points, but, you know. Now, do, do you know, did they ever speak of this matter or did it just, did it just go unspoken? Unspoken, never, never came up again. And um, actually, I was just talking to another uh, a mutual friend uh, the other night. That maid is still working for a friend of a friend, so oh, really? she's still in the picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. No, she's legendary. I mean, I, I heard yeah. she she's worked for several of our friends, and uh, I think that story. Uh, I think that story kind of proves her legendary status. She she is a legend. Yeah, I don't know if I could go through another person's porn collection and organize it for them. I mean, I probably could, but. I, I, it's not something you'd expect from sort of a, a, a mid thirties sweet Thai woman, <laughs> but uh, I guess she's yes. ha- made of hardier stock than most people would assume. Apparently, apparently, no doubt. Well, I, I mean, I don't have a maid right now. My mother in law lives with us, like I said, so uh, she she cleans up after us. But when she leaves, which she will do one day, bless her heart, I love her, but fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> I I will probably get a maid because um, I used to say. I never needed a car in Bangkok. No, we have Uber, we have Lyft, we have Grab, whatever. Uh, we have the SkyTrain. We don't need a car. I got a car, and I can never go back. I think it's the same thing with a maid. Oh, for sure. I mean, I uh, like I told you, I, as soon as I realized I could get a maid, I got one, and I've loved it ever since. And if anything, I've become worse. So it's like, I, I you know, I, I want the maid to do more stuff. Like I'm, I'm always asking my wife if like, can the maid go shopping for us? You know, my, my, my oh, wife's really? like, yeah, my wife's like, you can go out and do that. And I'm like, I could do that, but you know, can, can she do that? Like, what, like what's the, like, what's the limit? Like, what can, what can I ask her to do? I love your response. Like the laws of physics are like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm capable of doing that. I could, <laughs> I, I don't want to. <laughs> right. Well, I, you know, I think, I think I brought this up. Um, I can't remember which show, but I, I, I've talked many times about how when I moved to Thailand, I didn't know anything about this place. Nothing. Right. Uh, and so in the airport, I bought a book about Thailand. And on the plane, I yeah. read about the country I was moving to. And I specifically remember that book talking about how you should not be shy about hiring uh, helpers, like hiring maids, hiring landscapers, because, you know, they were saying that, you know, Thailand's a developing country. People need jobs. And so that's the way I think about yeah. it. It's like I'm giving someone a job. Yeah. It's a it's a legit 
job it's uh you know you have something to show for it it's a good honest day's work so you know there's there's nothing to be ashamed of it's it's, it's a uh, lots of families have been raised by mates and um yeah so it, it just it just took a, a while for me to get used to have you gotten messier now that you have a maid though uh you know i i don't think i've gotten messier i, w- I think i was born messy i stayed messy and i am <laughs> messy now <laughs> Like, again, it might be due. Like I said, I think I think I was spoiled growing up. I was definitely spoiled. Uh, I had a great mom. And again, my sisters helped out around the house. And so I never had to do anything around the house. I never had to do dishes. Like, you know, I've had I've had buddies would talk about how they had to do dishes or their parents made them help with dishes. Yeah. Buddies like me. Yeah. You. Yeah. Like other people. I I was spoiled. What can I say? I, I just never had to do that. I don't know. I just, I just feel very, still very, sort of uncomfortable being in the house when a maid is cleaning the mess that I made that I'm clearly capable of cleaning up. But I mean, that's just a personal quirk of mine. But anyway, I think the bottom line of this conversation is that uh, if you if you have the means, um, you should get a maid because you're supporting the local community, you're putting money into the economy, you're helping someone out. Um, but just don't sleep nude. Yeah, don't sleep nude, and then lock lock the drawer that has your adult movies in it. Yeah, but yeah, keep those somewhere safe. <laughs> I guess it's not a problem if you're uh, if you're living. Maybe not a problem if you're living with someone or if you're living on your own. But if you're living with someone and have a kid like I do, then anything like that, yeah, you definitely want to keep locked away somewhere. <laughs> yeah, good idea. That would be a good idea. All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or leave. And that's where one of us surprises the other one with a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living in Bangkok, loathe about living in Bangkok, or hate so much that it makes us want to leave. And uh, this week, man, it's it's your turn. What do you have? Okay, so I've got an issue that I'm sure you have long adapted to, but I still want to get your opinion on this and, and see maybe how hard it was to adapt to it. So okay. imagine this. You want to go see a movie. You check the movie schedule online, and it says that the movie starts at 7 p.m. Okay. But in fact, the movie starts at 7.30, and there's endless previews and advertisements and the King's thing. So there's this massive delay between the scheduled start time and the actual start time. What do you think about that? Absolute stone-cold Die hard loathe. <laughs> I loathe that. And I don't think that's just a problem in Thailand, but that's what we're, we're in Thailand, so that's what we're talking about. I think they do take it to extremes here because there is at least 20 minutes of advertisements before most movies these days, and it drives me crazy. I hate it. Oh, wow. So it doesn't even sound like you've adapted very well. It's funny. Uh, th- <laughs> this, goes back, this goes back to my first year in Thailand, my very first year. So this would have been 2000. My first Thai friend was a student of mine. Uh, she invited me to go see a movie with her and her boyfriend. So I'm basically okay. with a Thai couple. And, um, third wheel. And we met, yeah, third wheel, basically. And we met at the Emporium uh, movie theater. And uh, yep. we were sitting outside. And the movie, I can't remember the exact start time. But, you know, again, it was like the movie is supposed to start at 7 p.m. And it was like 5 to 7. And I said to them, like, oh, my God, we better get in there. <laughs> and and they both like laughed and turned to me and they said, "Now we now we really know you're new in Thailand." <laughs> and I was like, what, "That's funny." I was like, "What do you what do you mean?" And they're like, "The movie's not going to start till seven seven twenty seven twenty five." I was like, "What?" I was like, "Really?" That's interesting. So even that far back, hey, it was that bad for sure. And I think it was different. Really? I mean, I you know I haven't been to a movie in the states in a long time. Uh, yeah. But I don't think they have as many ads as they have here. I mean, here it's 15 minutes of ads. Uh, at least, yeah. I don't think so. And I remember probably six or seven years ago reading a story out of North America, out of out of the United States, about how some county or country or town was trying to introduce a bylaw that would, or, or some kind of law that would force newspapers to display the time the movie starts and then the actual time the movie Ooh, starts. Oh, I like that. That's a great idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. And man, I mean, I'm old enough that I remember when movies never had ads before them at all. Right. I was in Canada at the time. Yeah. But I, I, I would say they st- the practice only started in like the late 90s. Yeah, something like that. That 19, sounds about right. 95, you know, 96. You know, what I've, what I've learned is that 
because of that delay, you actually have some leeway. So if you're if you're late to a movie, obviously you're not really late. You know, so when I go to buy the ticket, I, I always ask if the movie has actually started yet or not. Um, oh yeah, you know, so you can show up fifteen well, minutes late at least. Well, I think it, I, there's one one very small sliver of of positivity here, and that you know it's going to happen. It's going to be at least 15 or 20 minutes. So say I finish work at 6, I can go and see a 6 o'clock show. That's right. That's because right. Because I know the movie's not going to start until 6.30. That's right. That's you know? right. So that's that's the only positive that I can bring out of this. Otherwise, yeah, absolute loathe for me. Now, it is true that they also play the national anthem, but that's only like a minute. So it's not the problem is not really the national anthem. It's really all the ads. No. I'm happy to stand for the national anthem for a minute. No problem. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, you know, 20 and, and, and people say, oh, I'd like to see the previews. And well, previews are released online now anyway. You don't need to see them on the big screen. Yeah. Let's make clear that. It, OK, so let's just say a typical time movie starts 20 to 25 minutes after the start time. Some of that is previews. Some of that is the national anthem. But most of it is commercials that we really don't want to see right i don't care about a lot of most of them are in thai i don't understand them and and then don't don't forget they've also got the thing like telling you to turn off your phone all right public service announcement i can get that they could probably do without that and just put up some subtitles on the screen please turn off your phone um then there's the like brought to you by dolby atmos and it's like a right a minute long commercial of a pickup truck driving through puddles or something stupid like (laughs) okay okay maybe all right i get unnecessary but all right But yeah, it's just those commercials. Um, And this gets into a whole other topic we could talk about, about how like you go and see a movie with your kid or or your teenager movie or young adult movie, and they show a trailer for like this gory, bloody, terrifying horror movie. Uh, (laughs) It's sort of like inappropriate to the movie it's attached to. But anyway, yeah, loathe, loathe, loathe. Well, I got to say that I I loathe it as well, but I, I feel like I've adjusted maybe a little bit better than you have. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to film school. I'm a huge nerd, film nerd from way back. Movie theaters are like church, a church for me. So don't don't sully my place of worship. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we'd like to say thank you to Mitch for lending us his support at the show's shout out level. And Greg, what did you find out about Mitch? Well, Ed, as it turns out, Mitch listens to the show on his way to work where he lives in London. Um, He was just in Bangkok with his lovely partner, Lisa, recently, and their kids, Jessica, James and Jacob. It's a pretty nice J theme going on there. I like it. And um, Mitch tells me he was born on a leap year, which technically only makes him 11 years old, um, which is the same age as Jacob. So he's the same age as as his son. Weird. Yeah, I've never, I don't think I've ever really met anyone born in a leap year. Not face-to-face, anyway. So, Mitch, uh, I'm hoping your trip went well and you didn't get any sass or back talk from any ties on your trip. And I was a little bit worried because, as you know, Ed, age is given a lot of respect in Thailand. So, if you're old, you're automatically given a level of reverence and respect that uh, is not afforded to maybe younger people or people younger than you. So, I got to thinking of leap year babies. Are, are they given the proper level of respect they're due in Thailand? Like... Like, yeah, you're, you're 44 technically, but actually you're only 11. So go and get me a beer and learn to hold your hands higher when you why, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good question. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. So, well, well, Mitch, um, uh, be careful when you travel here, buddy. You, you don't want to go around telling people that you look like an adult, but you're actually just a wee kid <laughs> and, uh, you might get in some trouble. And also speaking of uh, Jessica, James and Jacob, if you and Lisa have another kid, I suggest maybe, uh, maybe Jabez or Jewel, maybe Jeremiah, Joselius, Juvencio. Um, I'll tell you what, Mitch, I'll tell you what, make a, I'll make a deal with you. If you name your next kid Jorgensen, keeping up the J theme, <laughs> we'll give you a shout out on every single episode of the podcast. Jorgensen, what, what would be like the short version? Jorg. Hey, Jorg. Well, then people start calling him Jorge and think he's a Mexican kid or something. Yeah, it could be Jorge. Yeah, I like that. Although his Mitch's last name is Gray, so Jorge Gray. Uh, uh, I don't know. It might work. <laughs> well, thanks for the support, Mitch. We do appreciate it. We hope you had a good trip. And uh, next time you're back, let us know. We can um, we can buy you a, a beer and have some Jay food, which means vegetarian and Thai. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we wrap up, I'd like to give a special thanks to all of our lovely patrons. As you know, we don't run ads or have sponsors, so we really, really do appreciate the support we get from our patrons. Uh, if you want to learn more, just head to BangkokPodcast.com 
forward slash support. And if you want to get in touch with us, it's easy. Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We are very polite, and if you write, we will answer. Yeah, you can also find us on the Line Chat app, where we post each episode and carry on conversations with our listeners. You can also reach out to me directly on Twitter, where I am BKK Greg. So thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll see you back here next week. Thank you. Hey, listeners, uh, if you want to know how how glamorous it is recording podcasts, my internet crapped out tonight. So uh, Ed and I are actually chatting together on on our phones, recording to our computers. So uh, it's kind of a ghetto setup, but it seems to work okay. <laughs>